doing Instagram Live on the iStores account or yours? Do it on mine. It's me. Oh. All right, all right. Let me just get this going here. And we are officially live on the Boochfest TV channel. And uh, this is an extension of the virtual kombucha conference that we were that happened um, late in January, where we talked about the entire world of kombucha. And here we are today with a very special guest um, talking about kombucha and skincare. Uh, we have Manuela. She is an inventor, a formulist, an entrepreneur, a scientist, a cosmetic chemist, and she's the CEO and co-founder of Isomers Skincare based out of uh, Toronto, Ontario. And Isomers Skincare Laboratory is a Canadian innovation house privately owned by trained professionals who have developed unique and effective skincare formulas. And we're lucky enough to um, be able to chat with Manuela today. Thanks for joining us, Manuela. Oh, you're welcome. I'm uh, happy to be here. But a nice introduction, too. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All from Canada. But well, uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Good to talk about, uh, you know, as a scientist, cosmetic chemist, we formulate and we look at a lot of ingredients. And um, a couple of years ago, we started formulating also with kombucha because of its benefits. So this is a uh, Going to be a nice, nice talk about what we've what we've discovered and how we use it. Yeah, right on. Well, why don't we just start with skin in general? I mean, I, I think a lot of people they they go to the the gym, they eat healthy foods. Um, maybe skin doesn't really get the priority that it should in terms of a healthy lifestyle. So, can you just tell me a little bit about what skin can tell us about the rest of our lives and our and our habits? Sure, sure. Well, skin your skin is the largest organ of your body so it is an organ it is a vital organ it is the largest and it com encompasses um, the biggest mass um, skin is about nine to ten pounds that's how much it weighs on uh, your body and uh, it basically is um, collagen and connective tissue and it has a function, it has actually a job. So it is a wrapper, it actually holds you all together, it is your presentation card, uh, but it is also self-renewing. So being that it, and the great thing about skin, which I really always find very, and even after all these years, you know, 30 years formulating, whatever, I still love the fact that skin starts out as a liquid and it becomes a solid. So skin starts out by what you are eating and what's in your system, and then it makes its way up through cell division and through change to the surface of what you see. So skin is, in essence, everything that you are, your habits, your food, your, your, your genes, uh, your environment. Uh, it says a lot, a lot about you. Um, but the good thing about skin is also the fact that um, it is a self-renewing wrapper and it does very much like muscle. It does respond. It also it reacts, which is a bad thing, but it also responds to good habits or continuous patterns. And you can actually do a lot with your skin, even if you've done a lot of not so great things. So skin is one of is it tends to be very forgiving, not a hundred percent forgiving, but it tends to be very forgiving. And it is something that um, requires internal but also external support and it's very important to get the external support because of the fact that the skin requires protection from the environment but it also requires a top-up from what you're actually eating um, or, or ingesting because most of the good stuff will go to the other organs the skin is the least the last one to be fed and it's the first one that people see so if you want your skin to look good, you actually have to have some healthy habits um, and help to promote your skin and take care of your skin. So skin's got a lot of stuff to do. And it, you know, now we know that skin has uh, a mood. It has, it responds. It has, it, it can actually um, be unhappy and happy. And it actually will, will change its metabolism or its histamine around it, its reaction around certain things. Um, depending on all these things. So we're learning a lot more about skin. It's like, oh. I always call it like a video game, right? So, you know, when you get to one level, you know this much, but as you get better and better at the game, it gets more detailed and harder. S discovering what skin does is the same thing. We've, we've yeah. learned so much, and then we learn a little more, and then more, and then more, and it gets 
it gets more and more detailed. <laughs> let me, let me, give me one second. I just got to grab the door. <laughs> 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 He's grabbing the door. Oh, I'm like, oh, you're live, live. Live. Uh, I just want to save it and I'm going to do another live after it comes back. That's so cool. You can see okay? Yeah, I can see okay. I was worried about not hearing him. I actually should have worn my ear, ear, um, because I have. Oh. Next time. Next time. Because I have Bose ones. Yes. And then I, we can sync them. Okay. Like with them, and then you know, I'll hear them right there. Does it sound good? Sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Make it clear. Get up as I go. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you when I'm recording live, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. No problem. It's, kind of, it's our version of live TV. Um, I love it. So it's interesting. I remember, um, I think it was about five years ago, I bought a juicer for the first time, and I was inspired by a few documentaries and videos about juicing. And one of the things that people talk about after you start juicing is the fact that what you see on the external part because of what you're ingesting of these raw um, fruits and vegetables is the fact that your skin gets clearer, the whites of your eyes are whiter, and it sounded like it was a hoax, but sure enough, like six weeks or four weeks, whatever it was, after we started juicing, I started getting comments from our family who hadn't seen us in a month or two months, and it really was telling in terms of the nutrients getting to your skin, and I think your point of your skin being the last thing to absorb it does tell us the story about what you're ingesting and what you're eating because if it's the rest of your body is absorbing all those vitamins and minerals and you're not getting enough, it doesn't have time to get to your skin. So that healthy skin, um, in my own experience, is definitely a reflection of that um, healthy habits in terms of eating and drinking. And the other part is the genetics is what you said. And my grandmother is a perfect example. She's I think in her late 70s, early 80s, I, I don't know, but she looks like she's in her 50s or 60s or even her 40s. And everybody laughs because you look at pictures from 30, 40 years ago and she looks exactly the same, this Irish woman who every night puts on some moisturizer. I think she's a very simple farmer's um, skin routine, but eating healthy and being healthy and having a little bit of genetics definitely helps tell that story. It really, really does, you know, and it, and it is, you know, you are what you eat and it really, you know, you, you know, the beauty of your skin will show through. And, but the good thing is, <clears throat> even if we've done things that our skin is dehydrated or it's under stress, but we can get, we can, we can get a handle on it through juicing or through taking extra nutrients or just ensuring that, you know, inside, outside, you've got enough of the uh, nutrients that will, create what we call um, cellular organization. So if you think of skin like a layered cake, right? So you've got all these different layers and there's icing in between, you know, if there was no icing, the cake's kind of dry, it falls through. Uh, but when you have the right nutrients, uh, each one of those levels gets uh, aquaporin. So it gets its hydration and its structure, hydration and structure. So then the skin actually has that bounce and density and like Venice, is able to communicate and do what it needs to do, like through the transportation of nutrients. So, you know, eating well is very important, but also the, you know, protecting it from the environment, super important because we lose so much moisture out of our skin every day. And if we're not drinking enough, high, you know, and good quality product, you know, not too much sugar, you know, as clear as possible, those things will help the skin as well. So we talked a little bit about what you're putting into your body as reflection, uh, your skin reflecting what you put in your body. Um, another, you talked a little bit about the external factors and there's a lot of external toxicities in the world and pollutants, um, whether it's your clothing or the creams and liquids and masks that you put on your body. Like why should we care and why should we be conscious of what we put on our body and make that just a priority 
as what we're putting in our bodies? Uh, it's because the skin does absorb to a certain degree. It does actually absorb and it can enter. There's some, there's some uh, particular molecules or ingredients that actually go through the skin into the bloodstream. So that's, you know, that's how they do a lot of uh, nutritional, like, you know, when they use a patch, you know, patch for vitamins or patch to quit smoking or whatever. So it can be transdermal. So there are molecules or elements in our environment that do go through the skin. So it's very important what we're putting on the skin, what we're bringing into the skin. Um, and it's also important to uh, protect it from uh, dehydration and the UV and the toxicity. Um, a lot of the research now, uh, not only do we talk about UV stress and sun damage, we're actually talking about these tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic particles that float in and, and kind of attach to your skin, they're invisible, but they're just small enough to create inflammation. And when you have inflammation, you have this interruptive atmosphere on the skin. And think of like Horton Hears a Who, you know, you got something that tiny happening, but it actually ends up causing a lot of breakdown. So there's a breakdown where you get, uh, you know, an opening in the skin, you'll have a flakiness, you'll have some kind of rash, and all of that starts to create a disturbance and the stress to the mechanism. And then it takes away a lot of the work that the skin has to do, because then it goes into repair. So it's important, the things we're doing around us, you know, is very important. And to know what your allergies are and to know what your sensitivities are is also important. So you don't keep insulting your skin and, and creating that memory bond so it gets weaker and weaker over time. How do you get to know your skin? I mean, you talked just there about um, understanding and getting to know your skin. So obviously if we get a scratch, we know to avoid getting scratched. If we get sunburned, we know avoid getting sunburned. But these little... Um, things that happen, like talk to me a little bit more about getting to know your skin and understanding what's these like, I guess, minor irritations or minor um, inflammation that is telling you something that you might not know if, unless you were talking to an expert like yourself. Uh, for, you know, for example, there's a lot of foods out there um, that if you uh, come in contact with them or somebody else has eaten them and then maybe they just brush next to you or touch you or kiss you or something and your skin reacts to it. You know, those are the things, those kind of cues are, are what I'm talking about. So know where your skin reacts, what it reacts to, um, and why. I mean, you could start, it's almost like a food sensitivity. You can do it, you can do that kind of uh, experience with your skin. And um, it's very important that actually we do that because if you don't do it, your skin ends up becoming much more sensitive and weaker. And as it gets fragile, you'll start to see, you um, the thinning of the skin. So you'll start to see a lot more uh, broken capillaries, blood vessels, because the skin becomes more translucent. So it's like food allergies, or if something touches, or, you know, you can get it, you know, if you had touch poison ivy, you know that that, you're not gonna like that, your skin doesn't like it. Um, but then also, if those things happen, watch how your skin heals. A lot of people don't heal clear, they heal with marks, or it takes a long time, you know, it's almost like a, you know, it's like a stain and it doesn't really go away. And that's all characteristic of your skin health. Um, you were talking about skin, I guess, um, weakening. So I've heard a lot about, and this is just a little bit more specific, just in like hand skin care. But um, when we look at like hand sanitizers and alcohol, -free <laughs> hand rubs, like w what does that do? Because I'm assuming that dries out your, dries out your hands. But how do you, I guess balance incorporating good and bad bacteria with keeping yourself clean? Um, by not, well, I think the easy answer is, um, is it's an easy answer, but it may be difficult to do, but uh, it's all about moderation. You know, it's about being in a moderation and being aware. Hand sanitizers um, are good, but if you use them 15 times a day, that's too much, right? So the hand sanitizer is wiping away good colonies as well as bad colonies, but it's also drying out the system, right? It's drying out your hands. So without, re without rebuilding the protective acid mantle, you actually end up disturbing your skin flora, fauna, and have more of the negative bacteria, the bad bacteria on your skin, and that's why it's bad. It's only because it doesn't allow the skin enough time to, re 
to refortify itself, to rebuild its asset mantle. So things like that. I mean, uh, um, you know, the, I, I, I think one of the most interesting things I ever uh, came across was a study on hands and the cuticle. And broken cuticles are like an entry door for illness and it compromises your immune system. So a lot of people now believe you've got to really be careful about how your skin opens up if you if you have a little uh, you know opening or cut or tear on your cuticle or somewhere else because that actually allows things that you don't necessarily want to enter enter um, and it can affect you in different ways but this one with the cuticle is um, quite well researched and it does say that it over time uh, you can actually weaken your immune system that way so that's something that kind of makes kind of actually freaks me out sometimes when I think about it because I'm thinking, you know, it's, it, it's true because it's an open door and then it goes into your body. So, and the bacteria is so tiny, you know, when you have Demodex or tiny little microbes on your skin, they're so tiny that, you know, you really got to be aware of what you're putting on and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, it's interesting you're talking about the bacteria and the fauna because um, I hear that a lot since being immersed in this kombucha world and especially foods that are fermented uh, because yeah. today's diet and especially in North America is lacking those good bacteria for your stomach and you really don't get that from processed foods and it, it takes a lot of effort to go out and find uh, foods that have good bacteria for you and you're talking about that for your for your skin so I mean I, I hear a lot of links to probiotics and bacteria and enzymes and antioxidants um, as being beneficial to um, ingest and that's why a lot of people drink kombucha for those health benefits um can you tell me a little bit more about how those elements specifically play a role in skincare uh the good back the good bacteria so what's important about having a balance of bacteria so ideally for the for um it's believed uh, um that to be healthy perfectly healthy and perfectly imbalanced you should be alkaline on the inside and acidic on the outside right so that's that's part of how um, your skin wants to be treated. That's how that actually creates the right environment for your skin. So it will create a right environment, the right neighborhoods, you know. So so there's no weakness to it. So the good bacteria requires, um, uh, you know, it requires just things to do with it. Like uh, you know, it requires that you l allow it to rebuild the acid mantle. Uh, don't strip your skin. Don't use elements that are too harsh. Do use things that are slightly acidic. And kombucha actually naturally with its enzymes and its digestive elements, how it detoxifies is it creates about six or seven different acids um, that actually digest and break down a lot of the um, plaque and and balance and take away a lot of the plaque and take away a lot of the noise that's on the skin with the bad bacteria and help to rebalance it and detoxify it and that's really important too because that allows the skin not only to be clearer um because it does clean it up but it also uh, is important because then it allows the skin to breathe properly um if you consider think of the skin as a filter and you think of a dirty filter you know in your furnace you pull it out and you see all that gunk your skin uh, you know, that, that the, the, deto the detoxifying from the kombucha or these type of enzymes and acids clean that up and, and establish the breathability factor again. Interesting. Um, so let's go back to Isomer's skincare uh, laboratories and you talk, I mean, there's a lot of scientific talk in what you're talking about in terms of your products and it sounds like your approach to skincare, so I'm assuming that isomer skincare is alluding to that isometric uh, chemistry. So, can you tell me a little bit more about your approach to skincare and how this idea of isometric chemistry influences that approach? Yeah, that's actually a good. Um, so, I, 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 people all say, you know, where'd you get your name from, right? And so, um, an isomer obviously is a is a chem is a chemical term or chem a term in chemistry, and it is basically uh, to make it. I'm going to make it simple. Um, it is the shape of a molecule. Um, so when you have a molecule of a certain shape um, and it only functions one way, that in essence is an isomer. So now let me break it down. 
Your hands, okay, are isomers. They're mirror images of each other. They're mirror image. So that, that makes it uh, uh, stereochemistry, isomer as chemistry. But you can't superimpose them. So this, this then means that each one has its unique functionality. So it's, um, for example, vitamin E, there are seven different molecular shapes for vitamin E, but only two of them actually will have uh, benefits uh, uh, for the skin. So that's, you know, the other ones are just sit there. They don't, you know, they're, they're foreign. They don't know what to do because they don't know how to lock in and then uh, interact with the skin surface. So a lot of times think about an isomer as a key. You have a keychain. you've got 15 keys on it but only one key opens your front door because that's the right isomer, even though all the keys look alike. So it's that little teeny difference in the molecule and that's what we do. So we look for, we isolate different isomers and this way we allow for better penetration or uh, more unity in a formulation, uh, something that's more bioavailable for the skin or uh, less toxic uh, or slow release. So it depends on what car or vehicle we want to put it in. That's how we use our, our the, those molecules. And that's actually what makes us different too, because uh, you can use any ingredient. People say we've got all these ingredients in there, but if you don't have their isomeric value, they don't function the right way. So part of the, um, the virtual kombucha conference that we held, I was chatting with Hannah Crum, who's the kombucha mama, and we talked about understanding kombucha labels. So taking a look at the ingredients as well as the nutritional um, values in there and understanding the ingredients to understand what's actually in that bottle instead of just trusting what's on the front page or the, the title or the label of the, of the kombucha. So it sounds like um, your product and your approach is different than other skincare products. So how do you know or how, do you, how would a consumer know to look for yours or to, to understand what's in there and compare it properly to another uh, skincare product to ensure that um, there's a scientific and a, a thoughtfulness to the development of that product? Uh, <clears throat> good question. A lot of times because uh, when you're doing labeling and the labeling regulations, uh, we have to use inky names or international nomenclature, right? So because things are put under umbrellas, there are a lot, many times you cannot tell the difference between one version of vitamin E and another because they will actually have the same name and that's how it has to be presented on the label. So a lot of it then has to go through via the education of this is how we're formulating or this is how we're doing it. Um, and then the people then have to start trying it. I mean, that's really the only way because there's not very many ways you can actually isolate and identify them legally uh, on the labels because there is a standardization. And also some ingredients um, are put under such big ugly umbrellas that there's some really good things in there, but because the, the, you know, the, the overall name is bad, people discount it and they don't understand that it actually has a very, very important benefit and a very good element that you wanna put in your, in your formulas that will actually allow it to work much, much better but it's got a bad rap because it lives in the wrong neighborhood. You know, it's, it's under the wrong, wrong, large umbrella. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like, I mean, the message that we had too, when you were looking at labels was if you ever have any questions or concerns, contact or do your own research and find out if you're putting it in your body or you're putting it on your body, you should be an informed consumer and you should understand what you're buying and why you're buying it. So if you ever have questions, you can always, Google it, or there's typically 800 numbers or triple eight numbers on there that you can call the company and understand a little bit more about who they are and um, and their their approach. Uh, yeah, I, I, I um, <clears throat> we always invite people to you know we have our numbers always on the back of a bottle and we always say that you know we're like your your you know your uh, cosmetic chemist just call us you know and we'll give you what we know you know the the information that we have. Uh, a lot of times though people doing research out there and they use Google, you know, the, I call it the University of Google, right? It's, um, you know, there's a lot of science fiction out there, not necessarily science fact. So they also have to understand the source of where they're getting their information. Is this peer reviewed? Is this just a marketing? Because many times, even for us, sometimes when you're reading something, unless you really dig down and see, you know, 
who who actually is uh, you know writing the writing it um, is it a study or is it marketing you know and then you've got to look at and start evaluating the data and 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 verifying what you're reading so again it's great to ask questions and it's good to ask a lot of questions because the more you ask the more the the truth will come out or the real information will come out that you can actually use. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, I've seen some YouTube videos and uh, some uh, how to videos on using kombucha in skincare. The most common one that I've seen is taking a kombucha SCOBY and literally placing it onto your face as a, as a face mask. And I've seen that and I actually chatted with a commercial kombucha brewer and he said, while he was brewing one day, he burnt his skin and took a bit of the SCOBY and put it on top. And he said he's never had a, a Band-Aid like that, like a living Band-Aid work so well. Um, so have you ever put a kombucha SCOBY on your face? Uh, not on my face. I've had it on my hands. <laughs> and I had it on a sunburn here. Um, but yeah, you can. I mean, you can. I mean, I just think it's... Uh, I think they're so precious, <laughs> so you know you don't want to you know use them all up that way. I just find that they're very valuable, and for the usage, doing that, that you've got to, you know, it doesn't, you know, you can't really use it that often. But it is, it, it just goes to show though that it is very nutrient dense and it is very active, and it does have a lot of uh, enzymatic activity. So it is, you know, it's, it works very quickly and the enzymes go to work. And what's great about that is that with enzymes and their, and their half-lives, you can never actually over-process your skin. You can actually not, you, you won't ever go too far because they actually, once they've done their job, they turn themselves off and they just sit there. So you'll always have the right balance when you're using a product like that or when you're using the natural product like that with the enzymes in it. So it's it's good, especially for people with very sensitive skin, you know, then if they can put it on and just leave it, you fall asleep, you'll still be safe. So I like things like that, uh, where you don't have to worry or you don't, you know, it's you've not gone too far. That's amazing. I, I knew, I mean, I trusted um, Sebastian, who I talked to, that he said he put it on his skin and it healed. But to hear the fact that you reinforcing that it does work and just learning about that fact that it has these enzymes that turn off like I knew that scobies are smart you're right they're super precious and I mean it, it was funny the first time I brewed kombucha I made my own through just using a, a bottle of original kombucha and there's this weird connection that you have with it because it's a living thing and it's it's yours and it's going to help to create this nutritious delicious drink for you so there is a connection that you have with it and you're right once you take it out and use it it's not going to be able to reproduce and um and double up the next time and be able to be to be to be able to be shared but it's pretty amazing that this um oh that the scoby would prevent mold and and be able to just be left out and be able to ferment with that on top so it's amazing that it does that with um it's just part active living living thing and i think that's really cool about um about scoby so obviously you don't bottle scobies and sell them for their their health or their skin benefits um so apart from directly putting scobies on their face like how do you you and how do isomers use kombucha in in your products uh we use the we use the ferment so we do use a ferment and we have it standardized so that it is still viable still alive um, so the enzymes are still intact and we watch and we make sure that the enzymes are, um, uh, will interact properly with the skin and do the detoxifying and do the cleaning and do the balancing and help support, uh, good bacteria and a healthy acid mantle. Uh, but it does get a little scientific because we, um, extract it using supercritical fluid. Um, and this extraction will take exactly what we need. So we only take the enzymatic activity or the or the acids out of there. Some traces of vitamin C as well will come out, but all the moisture part, we just leave that behind. It's not part of what we use. And then we protect it in the formula with a um, skin identical type of barrier, a liposome barrier. And then we can formulate with it in a system that allows it to stay potent um and happy in the formula without uh without going bad without without having to worry about refrigeration or without having to worry about you know 
the, the it walking away of the Scooby <laughs> Dot <laughs> to you know too well nourished. But uh, that's how we do it, and that also allows us to be consistent, right? So when you're formulating in a laboratory, um, you're you standardizing it means that you will always have that value of enzyme. You'll always have that percentage, 15%, 17%, whatever you formulate to will always happen every time you batch it. So what do you have in front of you? Because I, I did, I was watching a video before um, we were chatting and I saw you talking about um, one of your masks that has a um, kombucha in it. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about that product? Yeah, so we were uh, we're really big into detoxifying the skin. So this is our kombucha mask um, that we have created, and it uses. Um, yeah, I love live live TV, live live cameras because I always pick up the wrong wrong labeled product. <laughs> um, but it uses the kombucha. I think it's this one. I, I like I like doing it when they're when they're difficult to open. I don't prepare things ahead of time. Even when I'm live uh, in the US, I do the same thing. It's always this pause for me to figure my stuff out. Um, but we created it uh, in essence to really create that um, extra cleansing step or extra clarifying step for the skin. We also do a lot of research with extremophiles. So extremophiles are living organisms and kombucha basically is, the scooby basically is that as well. It's a living organism. Um, it's not a survivor bacteria per se, like an extremophile, but it does have a lot of properties that allow uh, it to do well in poor conditions, allow it to detoxify. Um, and when we mean detoxify, we don't just mean clean. We also, or, or just on the surface of the cell, we also mean inside the cell. You know, think about when people say they have plaque in their arteries, you can have plaque within your skin cell and the kombucha is able to go in and there's another ingredient which is a sea moss can go in and it literally will clean that up so then the transportation between cells um, becomes better because the passageways are no longer blocked they'll, they'll open up and that's actually a very important function we're finding for the skin so that's why we want to be able to mask the skin and leave it on 10-15 minutes to introduce that that cleaning uh, within the cell, intracellular, of the kombucha. Now, do you recommend having a glass of kombucha like like I am before you're um, putting on putting on the mask, or that's something you can have uh, after? Yeah, you can have it any time. <laughs> you can have it any time. So this is the mask, and it's a very creamy style mask, um, and that will sit on the skin, and it will just start to digest, and it will start creating that functionality that we want of cleansing, uh, of detoxifying, stabilizing, but not just on the cell surface, but also on the inside because of these pathways. And this is kind of um, newer science. This is not science, this is science that will be talked about in three, four years from now. Um, so we're at that cutting edge at that point, we're starting to introduce it and do more research on it. Not just us, us. there's also other pharmaceutical houses that we're working with that we're utilizing this type of uh, uh, mechanism, this type of uh, extremophile to do this for the skin. So no, that's I, what, very I was smart. gonna say, I saw in the video, um, when you're applying it to someone's face, there's some like rubbing and massaging happening. Um, do you recommend that? Cause I know you're just leaving it on your hand. Is that just for demo purposes? But if it was on the face, you'd rub it? Yeah, if you rub it, it becomes a gommage. And that's really important. A gommage is like, uh, it, it dries up um, and as you rub it, what that will do is that will actually increase the microcirculation and uh, give your lymphatic system a little push and that actually will then help uh, detoxify and help uh, the product work better and your skin to receive more of the benefit. So those things are important too. So that's why we also give you that option. It's not drying now. Um, we give you that option to do a gommage. I always like being able to do a gommage. It actually just feels really good too. You know, it feels so clean and soft when we do that. Yeah, and so that's typically applied to your face. Yes. Or could it be applied every, anywhere? You can apply it anywhere, uh, You could, but mostly face, neck area, sensitive areas, any area that you want to refine, areas that you find that you have uh, enlarged pores or irritation, areas that you want to brighten up, 
Um, so it's predominantly people really take care of their face, then a little bit their neck, but their body, I don't know, we, we kind of like, especially in the winter from here down, not much, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's only a, by necessity, I think. Yeah, uh, that's true. Are, when you're living in, um, maybe on the West Coast in California or some warmer places, you're a little bit more conscious of being in uh, in your bathing suit or, or being less clothed for most of the year. But you're right, when it's minus 30 or uh, 50 centimeters of snow coming overnight, you're really just bundling up and sometimes it's just your eyes that are... Uh, that are out in the in the elements. Truly, truly, because yeah, you do. You want to just stay nice and warm, but that's important too. That's why um, these bacteria are very important. I mean, there's a there's one bacteria that we got um, uh, in the uh, in the Antarctic at the bottom of glaciers, and this this extremophile allows uh, for cold shock, uh, not to destroy, not to not to allow the cell to rupture. So we've been able to utilize that as an extract as well for cold weather protection. I keep looking out the window, but it means very white. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of snow coming in. So you need a lot of protection from, from the, you know, the elements. So the elements will, you know, make your skin, you know, react, uh, robs the moisture, changes the temperature, introduces pollutants. So things like kombucha or, or digestive enzymes are very important to create that balance to create that friendly environment again. So we talked about the mask. What else do you have there that you were putting oh, in your hands before? Great. So this is a this is a misting spray, which is this is the way I really like to deliver the product because it does do a micro spray on the skin. So you actually get this burst of nutrition in very 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 small particle size. Um, so that allows. Um, your skin to be just like when you're drinking. So when you take a drink and it goes through your system and you get that flush of nutrition and hydration and the micronutrients and, and uh, the enzymes, uh, this is what it's doing for your skin surface. So it's literally helping to hydrate instantly, but it's also helping to not remineralize, introduce those enzymes to create that balance and it support that acid mantle. So this is a really interesting way of doing it. This is my favorite way. Um, of, of using the kombucha formulation. I'm still working on the app. <laughs> <laughs> so is it it's similar to the mask that you showed us in terms of formulation and ingredients and benefits, or it's just a it's a different delivery mechanism? Yeah, the delivery system for the spray is another one of my favorites. My buddy is spirulina. So we actually use a blue green algae um, and and match it up together, almost like juicing. We, we put that the micro, the green nutrients with the kombucha, uh, the black tea. And we do that intentionally to create this uh, symbiotic relationship for the skin. So you see it's like, just close your eyes and you spray and it's really refreshing. Um, and it's like, you know, having a nice drink for your skin. Oh, here, my, my skin is now peeling off. <laughs> now everything is, is uh, peeling off now from the mask. But that's the way I like it. And it's also great because you can introduce it to any skin type at any time, you know? So you could be out, you just spritz your skin, uh, you know, between washing your skin, it, you can be, it could be a toner. It can help boost the metabolism of sluggish skin. Um, it can calm skin down. So it has a lot, a lot of benefits uh, on the skin. So it's, it can be used for beauty, but it can be just used for skin comfort as well. It's so amazing as we're chatting here, the similarities between um, kombucha, the drink, and kombucha in skincare and in those formulations, because you're just talking about the blue green algae. I've seen kombucha with blue green algae in it um, for that added a little bit of color, but also that added nutritional benefit. So it's it's pretty amazing the similarities in terms of um, what you're putting in your body and what you're putting on your body. And I think if you're into uh, kombucha, you're into fermented foods, you're into finding out new healthy alternatives to just every product you can imagine, then looking and searching out for a skincare regime and skincare products that reflect the same thing that you're eating and drinking is, is so important. And it's great that you're able to formulate um, products like this, include kombucha, include things that are living and that have those healthy enzymes. And like you said, that are nutritious for your, mm -hmm. for your body. Uh, do you have one more product there? 
No, no, this is just a different size. Uh, the, we have the two, so the mask for that deep penetration and the detoxifying, and then the spray, the phyto mist. But I, you know, it's it's really um, great to be able to use it this way as as a food source, as an energy source for the for the skin, and it, it's a really nice balancing element because you can actually uh, now my phone's ringing. Uh, we can actually, um, uh, you know, spirulina is a complete protein. So it's very, very nutritious. So when you add the kombucha with it, with the environmental elements and, and uh, you know, the, the enzymes and those, those various acids, um, it creates, I think, a super powerful, um, a super powerful nutrient uh, for the skin and also for the body because it is so easily, it doesn't need to be digested at all. So it goes to work right away and it is done in the right pH, which is super important. So I, I like ingredients like this because you don't really have to do much and it's exactly what to do because it is by nature predominantly is the, the, it's the exact isomer has the right value. So it can actually um, bind and do the work immediately without any kind of chelating or introduction or too much fanfare. Mm -hmm. So as, as we're wrapping up here, um, I'm just thinking of some takeaways for uh, people who are, who are watching in terms of um, incorporating uh, a, a healthy skincare routine. Can you walk me through, um, and I'm sure everyone has different skincares and, and different, or different issues they want to tackle when it comes to skincare, but I think if we're just looking at a general population of someone who's either wants to know more about um, this sort of skincare journey, or maybe they're, they've started it and they want to add to it, um, can you walk us through either a daily or a weekly routine of what we should be thinking about um, and adding to our kind of skincare uh, refrigerator, essentially? Sure. Um, the mo I think one of the most important things is cleansing your skin. There's a lot of misconception with how to clean your skin, how to wash your skin. Um, I always joke that cleansing your skin is similar to martinis. One is not enough, three are too many. So you, the studies show <laughs> you, you wash your skin twice a day um, and wash it with a product that is the right pH. Um, so if you're actually cleansing your skin and it's squeaky clean, you're actually disturbing the acid mantle and you're inviting bad bacteria to cause a lot of havoc with your skin. Increases the sensitivity, changes its, its, its metabolism, uh, makes it weaker overall. So cleansing is very important and what you cleanse with is very important. Um, so something like this with that would be natural enzymatic would make a lot of sense to cleanse your skin with that and then use uh, some kind of fats as well, just to take away some of the um, some of the lipids that build up on the skin. Um, and then, uh, what's also very important to utilize on your skin is good sunscreen. Uh, sunscreen is always important, uh, but now I also like to use uh, sunscreens with a, uh, a, a pollution defense. So it actually creates a, a very invisible light barrier on your skin. So you don't have the particles. It almost creates like a, a feeling of, I'm going to say Teflon because that's the action um, for your skin. So your skin is protected from not only UV, but it's also protected from the pollutants. So in essence, a really good cleanser and a really good sunscreen with moisturizer are really key if you want to keep it simple. And if you want to get a little bit more like now you're fighting pigmentation or sunspots or you want to you know, be more anti-aging, then you would incorporate a vitamin C or a glutathione uh, program, a super antioxidant. But I prefer glutathione because it's the one the body manufactures. So very much like, you know, when you, you know, if you look at nature, nature really doesn't make too many mistakes. So if we duplicate what nature is doing, then you'll respond better. So we've we've seen a lot of uh, skin benefits with glutathione product. Um, and then um, something with a, uh, a vitamin A, um, which is also very important for the skin at, in the evening, but not in the daytime. So that's kind of making it simple and then making it a little bit anti-aging. Wonderful. I appreciate that. And it's been a great, great chatting with you, Manuel. I've um, enjoyed myself. I've definitely learned a lot and um, definitely thinking and reflecting on my skincare regime because I'm sure 
Um, like most um, males, it's something that we don't think of um, as much as probably females do. And I think it's important for us to um, not think of it necessarily as a as a beauty regime, but really think of it as taking care of, care of ourselves and our, our health and wellness. And that happens from the inside out and it happens with what you're putting in your body and also what you're putting on your body. So if I want to go and pick up a, um, some mask or a, or a spray, where do I find your, um, where do I find your products? Where can I get them? Oh, um, we, because we're, we truly are scientists, uh, researchers, and we only have it uh, out of our lab uh, in Canada, uh, here on Tycos in, in Toronto, but we are online. So you can look us up at uh, isomers.ca uh, <laughs> uh, on our website, um, but it's lab direct and um, we keep it very fresh and we do just in time batching. So all of our products have high efficacy and are very, very, um, fresh and potent and uh, easy to use. You can't make a mistake with them either. Cool, so you just go to isomers.ca and uh, pick it up. And you do, you can go in and just type in, if you, if you can't find it in the product selection, I went in and just type in the search kombucha. Yes. And the, the products come up there, so it's nice and easy to, to find it. You don't have to memorize the actual name of it. Um, no, so. you just have to say kombucha and the, the formulas will come up and uh, we're gonna activate a little special promotion too, so that if they are, um, wanting to try our product or get the benefits of kombucha from the outside in, and we'll be happy to help. Wonderful. Well, we'll send the details. We'll put the details in the um, bottom of the uh, YouTube link. And for all the uh, Boochfest fans, we'll send out an email and um, put it up on our Facebook page as well, too, so you can take advantage of that special offer from uh, Manuela and Isomers. So thanks so much again. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a uh, a great day and I'm sure we'll be chatting and collaborating in the future or sometime soon. I love it. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.